Welcome to my studio. My name is Matthew Holden Bates, and this is Il Duomo di Firenze. It's my latest oil painting. Uh, I just finished it, and I'd like to share with you the experience of what it was like to make this painting and what it means to me. And hopefully, I can transmit that thought to you by talking about it, but also hopefully, you can see uh, what I've done here and. Well, let's get right to it. So when I started this painting uh, way back in February of 2019, uh, I knew it would be tough. I knew it would be a hard painting to do, uh, but I wasn't quite sure how hard it would be until I got started. Um, basically, what I did is I, I kind of started with this figure in the middle here. And he is St. Matthew. Uh, and so naturally, St. Matthew, for me, <laughs> that evolved into a self-portrait and also it's important to note that this part of the painting was done in 2019 so before the covid pandemic and you know it, it, it has a big uh importance to the painting but it also is so different from the rest of the painting because what we've got here as a self-portrait you have a guy who's you know kind of not so happy, you know, with the way things are going, even though, well, let's face it, the worst was yet to come. We had no idea. So what we have here is, is me holding up one of my paintings. Now that one there is Perseo. And Perseo is a painting I did in 2018. So it's, you know, fairly recent and uh, definitely something I would present uh, if I were to say this is some of my best work. And so here I am holding this painting, kind of just like, hey, you know what world, um, what's going on? You know, like, wh why am I having such a hard time here? Also, you can see that I signed the painting on the bottom there, Matthäus, that's uh, Matthew in Latin, and also the number 19, which is for 2019. Okay, so as we go back, we can start to see the other two figures, which were made in 2020. Now, the middle figure is St. Bartholomew. And St. Bartholomew, at first glance, when you're there at the Duomo, you think, well, wow, he looks really upset, you know? But then I started looking a little bit closer and I noticed, well, hell, you know, look at that. He's stepping forward. So I asked myself, well, what is that? Well, why is he stepping forward? I don't quite understand that. And then it occurred to me that what he's doing is he's about to make a leap of faith. In fact, look, he's scared. He's holding himself. He... He's not sure. He's not 100% sure that this is a good idea. <laughs> but he knows in his heart that that's what's going to have to happen. Uh, because that's what you have to do in life. You have to make a leap of faith. And in fact, if you look on the bottom, I wrote fetus in deum, which is Latin for faith in God. And also you have a 20 for 2020. This figure really does represent a lot for me because making this leap of faith, you know, that's, that's really important because especially as an artist, you, you're always asked to make leaps of faith, you know, in your work. You know, even just being an artist is hard. You, you never know where the next commission is going to come from, from or, or like the next show or anything, you know, you just have to like kind of hope for the best. Anyways, so then we get to the third figure. Now, this became uh, a portrait of my father. And my father is very special uh, to me uh, for many reasons, not just because he's my dad, but also because he's an artist himself. And he's always been an artist. Uh, you can see him here. He's holding his clarinet. Uh, he's a professional clarinetist. He's worked in the Opera House Orchestra in the Kennedy Center uh, for 35 years. Uh, now he's retired. And uh, yeah, he got his start um, way back you know, back in the 60s, uh, he joined the Marine Band, um, and that was his ticket to Washington, D.C., which got him all the way to the Kennedy Center. And then uh, he became a painter as well. So he's always been a really big help for me uh, in my work, even though his work is very abstract uh, in nature. Um, so I decided to homage him by, you know, adding him to the painting. I thought that was really, you know, a cool idea. Uh, also because he's the goal, you know, he's, he, he's the one who actually made it as an artist. And, uh, 
he's still making it as an artist. He's, uh, he's a really, really great guy. And so I wanted to add him to the painting. Um, so here you have the story. It's, it's me, not too happy, and going, hey, what, what's going on in the world? Why is it that you know, I have to work so hard and I get no credit or whatever? But that's just me whining, really. You know, I, <laughs> I hadn't quite made the leap yet. And I think you know, this leap is, is basically something that we can all ask ourselves, you know, so, so what is a leap of faith? And what is faith even? You, know, you can ask yourself that all the time. Uh, I think the answer is simple. If you don't make a leap of faith, then nothing will happen. And then, of course, my dad, who has made that leap of faith from day one, he made it all the way. So that's the goal. So that's, that's the journey. You have me. And maybe you could even say that the figure in the middle represents a little bit us in the post-COVID era. We all have to make this leap. And, you know, it's, it's daunting. It's tough. I mean, look where this guy is. He's at the top of this building. I'll step back a little bit so you can get a better sense. This, this building is very very large and where these figures are you know that's like up three four five stories i'm not sure exactly how tall it is but you know high really high so if he were to fall from there <laughs> that would be it so his eventual leap well that's going to be you know important for his development um i and that's why i wrote fetus and Diem so that you know it would be a faith in god you know it's like your life you don't have proof of god unless you have your faith um intact so anyways that's the story of the three figures and you know so like you get the real sense that you know this painting all of the painting itself uh you know it does have a story all of all of the parts of the painting have a story so now we're up at the very very top of the Duomo, we have this amazing bronze ball, uh, looks like gold, reflects the light. It's, you can see it for miles and miles away. It's really, really cool. But then as we go down right here to the very first level, um, you know, we notice that they, there are these, uh, well, they're not statues, are they? It's hard, kind of hard to tell what they are. Um, so I was thinking about it, I was like, well, they. They look a lot like pawns from the game of chess. And I was thinking to myself, well, why on earth would they put these pawns on top of the church? You know, it doesn't have any meaning. It's really strange and also extremely dangerous. I mean, these things could fall over in the wind up there. It's really intense. So they have to have some major meaning. So I was thinking to myself, well, wait a hold a minute. If they're pawns, uh, then, you know, what do we got here? Well, that looks like a king, doesn't it? From, always from the game of chess. Well, it turns out that if we count the pawns going around, there's eight of them. And in the game of chess, there are eight pawns. And the main job for the pawn is to protect the king. So let's think about this in terms of like history. Um, you know, if we go back in time, we can start to see that you know, they didn't have any modern technology at all. Uh, what did they have in their house? You know, they had probably some paper and some chalk or, you know, they could draw stuff. Uh, but they also had chess. Uh, chess was a big part of society. Uh, it had to have been. And I'd imagine that somebody like Brunelleschi, who was a really smart guy, uh, he was probably really good at chess because, you know, being good at chess was one of the proofs that you're smart. And so... What was he doing? He's probably, while he was creating the lantern here, because, you know, first he had to design it and then he had to build it. Uh, actually, he didn't. Uh, other people did. But uh, his design may have come from him messing around with a chessboard. So I decided to do the same thing. Uh, I took eight pawns out of uh, the chess set and I put the king in the middle, just like it is here. And lo and behold, we have the exact design of the pawns around the king. And I really think that that must be it because uh, I do think that perhaps, you know, if we look at this in terms of symbolism, it's rather profound because, you know, if you think of the dome itself as being the king of Florence, it's, you know, the most important thing. Uh, you know, it, if it fell, then Florence would fall and the game would be over. 
because that's what happens when the king falls. So the game is over. So what did uh, Brunelleschi think? Okay, well, let's protect the most important building with these pawns so that the king will survive. Well, you know, that was 500 years ago. What's happened since? All manner of things, every single war you can think of from especially coming up to World War II. And then after World War II, uh, you know, we have the U UN being founded. And one of the things that the UN decided to do was to create uh, historical sites. And Florence is a protected historical site. Not just the building, but the entire center. So it's like Brunelleschi's job of protecting the dome with the ponds has worked for 500 years. I find that to be really fascinating. Also, uh, when I was making this part of the painting, I was really wondering, what is this design? I mean, my gosh, this is so elaborate. And then, of course, you know, I started working on the top part, and it <laughs> just happens to be the exact design of the top of the dome with the uh, eight pawns protecting the king. And that's exactly what we have here. So I guess that when they made the facade some 300 years after having made the lantern, you know, they had to remind people of the genius that is Brunelleschi's work. Okay, so let's move on to the middle section of the painting. And we're going to find that there are these circles. Um, which are underneath the terrace. And they're really fascinating. Uh, you know, the first two that we saw, now they, they seem to have obvious meaning. Uh, we have a cross and the fleur-de-lis, which is the symbol of Florence. We have another little fleur-de-lis kind of hiding back there. But what about these guys? Okay. What's going on? And another thing you have to remember is that these symbols are extremely high up in the air. First of all, they have, there's no need for them to be this precise. They look almost laser cut. And while I was painting it, it was really hard because, you know, I had to get all of that detail in there and it had to, you know, had to work. So my question is, so what are they doing up there and what meaning do they have? And I'm not really sure, but then, of course, when you look next to the symbols, well, then you see these guys. And what are those? Well, that looks like tongues, doesn't it? So you've got one, two, three tongues. And they're just up there, too. And, you know, so why on earth would the makers of the Duomo decide to put tongues up there. It's almost disgusting looking, you know, like, but then you think, okay, obviously it has meaning. So everything that an artist does, an architect or, you know, a stonemason or any of these people, uh, the designers of this, they all, you know, had a, had a purpose to do this. This is extremely expensive to do this uh, and also technically difficult. So my guess is, is that what they were trying to do was create a message and uh, a message that can be transmitted, not using words, but by using mathematics. Uh, because obviously these symbols have some sort of mathematical meaning. Um, almost look like crop circles or uh, dies for some sort of um, machine. It's really hard to tell. Um, it could be flowers or stars. Um, and they have a, a six or an eight uh, number going on here. So here we've got four and four, four and four here, and then we've got eight uh, points of the star, and here's the six. This is another eight, and so forth and so forth. Also, there's a strange uh, re repetition. It's not equal. Um, there's one, two, and three of these guys, two of this, and two of these, which are hidden behind the 
Cornisher here. So kind of hard to know what's going on there. Uh, my guess is that there's a symbol and perhaps the tongues repre represent, um, I don't know, maybe th uh, three octaves. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, of course, if anybody knows anything about this, I would love to discuss it with you. In every one of my paintings, I like to add a little bit of whimsy, uh, Easter eggs, things like that. And I'm going to point out uh, a couple for you right now. Uh, so let's go right into the painting. We're going to start at the very top where you see I signed the painting. That's MHB for Matthew Holden Bates and 2020 and Firenze, Italia up there. And as we come down, you can see that we have a little visitor. That's, that's uh, Gus. And Gus is an indoor cat. And uh, so I figured maybe he'd like to go outside just for once. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, you know, if you like what you see, I'm Matthew Holden Bates, also known as Mateo Paints. And I'm gonna be posting videos frequently uh, from now on. And so hopefully you will subscribe. Hit that like if you liked what you saw. And you know, come back for more. Uh, be happy to see you. And of course, this is a discussion. Uh, and I would love to hear from you. So if you have anything that you would like to uh, talk about, whether it be about this painting or other paintings, just let me know. And uh, I'd be happy to talk about it. So until next time, ciao.